Since we're about to get Kezu returning in Monster Hunter Rise, I thought you know what, let's go ahead and take a look at this little piece of theory in Monster Hunter lore on whether or not there's a possibility that Kezu could see without the need for its eyes. Let's go ahead and take a look. Hey everyone, Kodopinoy X here once again, back with another Monster Hunter video. And today, we'll be looking into the returning monster that is the Kezu, the strange wyvern, to understand more about the monster's abilities. This phallic looking wyvern that makes even the Pokey Village Chief embarrassed when describing it. I mean, come on, Chief, I get it. It looks like a weird. Uh, I don't even want to describe it myself, but you gotta finish that sentence because I got a monster to hunt and I wanna protect the village. Uh, anyway, anyway. This monster definitely stands out as a bit of an oddball within the flying wyvern category due to the combination of its weird physiology and the environment it prefers to live in. We will be looking into the research behind the strange wyvern's overall abilities to better understand whether or not this monster has the ability to see without the need for its eyes. Now the information that we're about to look into here is an amalgamation of Hunter's experiences on the field when facing off against this creature, as well as documentation by researchers when conducting experiments and observations focusing on the Kezu. The common knowledge behind the monster is that the Kezu is blind. This much is factual, yet hunters on the field when fighting this beast have stated that despite the monster being blind, it was able to determine their position accurately as if the monster could see them. The use of a flash bomb determines the blindness of the monster, making it useless in combat against the Kezu. Some researchers have suggested that maybe due to the Kezu living in cold, dark caverns, its eyes have regressed to nothing as part of its adaptation, and the monster now relies on its sense of smell and hearing, which will have sharpened over the years of the monster's growth in order to compensate for the lack of eyesight. But is that really all there is to the Kezu's senses? The monster's ability to accurately determine a creature's position could definitely be due to them making a noise or the monster sensing their scent. So the researchers of the guild decided to conduct an observation with a potentially docile Kezu to see if this truly was the case and the monster is utilizing its sharpened senses in order to determine a hunter's position. Now acquiring a docile Kezu isn't really all that difficult because believe it or not, there are some people who are known to keep them as pets and even train them for certain purposes. This makes observation for a Kezu much safer in comparison to observing a wild one. So this is one of the key things that we have to understand here. Not all Kezus that we observe are gonna be wild ones. Observing a much more docile Kezu does give us the information that we need and at the same time, it is a much safer observation. With a docile Kezu assisting in the research, now let's talk about the actual observation. To observe the Kezu senses, researchers conducted a very simple task of presenting the monster with a freshly killed Kelby. If the monster is able to hear the researchers presented with a free meal, this will showcase the monster's sense of hearing. Alternatively, if it instead sniffs around for the free food and consume it, it will showcase the monster's sense of smell. However, during the observation, the monster instead showed an odd behavior. It sensed a small rodent next to the corpse and instantly consumed the small rodent instead of the large cadaver. This odd behavior made the researchers question what the main difference was between the rodent and the kelby and concluded that the main difference was that the rodent was a living breathing being at the time of the research. However, they are now presented with yet another question in regards to this observation. What exactly did the Kezu sense on the rodent that it couldn't sense on the dead kelby? Researchers began to theorize that perhaps the Kezu didn't hear or smell the small rodent, but rather it sensed its body heat instead, as the rodent would be generating a strong body heat possibly due to stress, whereas the dead Kelby would be dissipating body heat instead, possibly going cold at the time of the observation. This would allow the Kezu to determine the rodent's position more accurately and consume the unfortunate prey. With this theory in mind, perhaps the Kezu is able to figuratively see body heat almost akin to a form of infrared sensor built into the monster's body. This infrared-like ability may be due to the monster building up electric currents within its body thanks to its electro sac, allowing the monster to use electricity to rebuild its eyesight but in a very different manner. 
This could also explain why the monster prefers to live and hunt in colder areas such as snowy tundras as well as cold damp caverns. These areas would be perfect for the Kezu to sense body heat as the heat of any living being would be isolated by the lower temperatures within these areas allowing the Kezu better accuracy in hunting down prey and in other situations eliminating any potential threats within its vicinity. Though this is only theory at this moment in time, it would explain what hunters experience on the field with the Kezu able to track them down accurately despite the monster's lack of eyesight. To better back this theory on the Kezu seeing with body heat along with using electricity to do so, we can also observe the distant cousin of the Kezus which are the Giganox. Now I know many of you would like to see Kezu and Giganox both make it into Monster Hunter Rise but for the time being only the Kezu has been confirmed but we are going to use Giganox to better understand the Kezu's abilities here. Now Giganox do not generate electricity yet they are able to determine accurate positions of prey despite being blind. Instead of generating electricity, the Giganox have a unique sensory organ that allows them to detect body heat without the need for electrical abilities or the use of eyesight. Now since the Kezu lack these sensory organs, they have to potentially make up for it by using electricity in smaller increments in order to gain their pseudo eyesight. So that's the main difference between the Giganox and the Kezu when detecting monsters and other creatures using body heat. One uses electricity, the other has a unique sensory organ for it. So now that we have determined that the Kezu could potentially gain some form of pseudo eyesight via the use of electricity running in its body, the monster more than likely maintains that electricity to stop it being fatal. If too much electricity doesn't outright kill the monster as a Kezu's body is not insulated, it could cause their other senses to go completely awry instead. This was actually speculated by the Mesoporter region of the Hunter's Guild where they found a highly mutated Kezu that generates far more electricity compared to the normal monster. This mutated Kezu, known as a Zenit Kezu, doesn't rely on its sense of hearing or smelling and is instead recorded to have small hairs covering its body in order to detect motion. Zenit Kezus have been recorded to detect their prey via the vibrations that the prey would make whenever they move. These movements would then be detected by the hairs of the Zenit Kezu, allowing the monster to determine the position of its prey as well as any potential threats that might be within its vicinity. This demonstrates that too much electricity could cause a Kezu to lose their other senses, thus causing the monster's body to mutate and grow hair in order to restore its ability to sense anything such as prey and enemy alike. Now despite ample information to back the claim that the Kezu could hypothetically see a creature's body heat, there's still much we don't know about the monster in order to make these claims conclusive. This means that the research on the Kezu, whether that be the regular monster, the red Kezu, or maybe even the Zenit Kezu, will continue to provide further developments in understanding the monster's senses which in future could provide more information regarding whether or not the Kezu can indeed see using body heat in tandem with its other senses much like that of its cousin, the Giganox. So keep that in mind, these are all still questionable at this point, there is no 100% conclusive information in order to confirm that the Kezu can indeed sense body heat and even see with it. And that is pretty much it for this video taking a look at a theory that a Kezu may be able to see body heat by utilizing electricity in its body in order to create infrared vision. Now before we finish off this video, I want to go ahead and give a massive shout out to none other than Bandlagiacros on Twitter who has been supportive in regards to the research behind the Kezu and has even provided me some of the research material in order to better support this claim. All of those Japanese texts that you saw with the English translation by the side of them, they all came from his page and he's allowed me to use them so if you want to go ahead and check out more monster hunter lore go ahead and check out their twitter page as of right now link in the description below alongside this i also want to thank naruga rex for allowing me to use their monster hunter frontier clips so i could showcase the zenit kezu for you if you want to go ahead and check out their youtube channel and see more monster hunter frontier content Again, link in the description below for Naruga Rex's YouTube channel. And with that being said, what do you think about this theory of the Kezu being able to see using body heat within the Monster Hunter series? Let us know in the comments below your thoughts and opinions regarding the Kezu and its senses as well as any other theories that you might have regarding this particular monster. Now with all of that being said, if you enjoyed these videos, please consider leaving a like on the video itself and subscribing to the channel as well as hitting that bell icon so you can go ahead and catch up on any future Monster Hunter content that I might be doing or any other games that I might be playing in future. 
Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Onward and upward.